Good evening. Uh, brief, I want to look at um, a video that was linked to by Suda talking about the same issue that uh, the, uh, by, uh, that uh, Robert Blake was talking about. This is Doug Stolfer talking about defending pre-trib rapture. And he starts talking about this nonsense about uh, 144,000. So I'm getting a lot of spinning in because we get some bad weather. And so it's, this is going to be brief. So let me just look at it here. Appeared at the Mount of Transfiguration. Both of them disappeared from this earth under, shall back. we say, abnormal circumstances. Moses was uh, 120 years old. He didn't even look like he was 30. It's about 10 minutes into the video. Now, what he has to do is he has to expand it. Now it becomes not only the Jews have died in Matthew 2, it all becomes uh, the Jews that were babies that were thrown into the, river, the water, and uh, you know, uh, with the Egypt, and the children who died in the, in the um, the Holocaust. See, the problem is you don't have to answer the question because not every question is answerable, people. This makes the, people say, "Well, where did the hundred forty-four thousand?" You say, well, the, the pre-trib view is established because of a sound hermeneutic principle of strict interpretation. We don't go off and spiritualize things, and allegorize things. That's what it's known why the, the pre-trib rapture, we compare scripture to scripture, and we take things literally. Now we got guys like Robert Breaker and Stolfer going off, going off the cliff. Well, let's look at this, maybe this, maybe that. Come from, where are you gonna find 12,000 male Jewish virgins from each of the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel in the 21st century? Great question. Let me, let me, God knows, God knows where the Jews are. And God knows what, what, who these guys are and he's going to bring them together. So don't worry about it. We're not told to worry about it. Go to an opinion a little bit. Okay. Um, Matthew 2, 16. Then Herod, when he saw he was mocked, the wise men, so he, sl he slew all the children two years and under. Uh, verse 17, then was fulfilled, this slaying of the children, then was fulfilled that which was spoken by Jeremy the prophet, Jeremiah, saying, in Ramah was there a voice heard, lamentation, weeping, and great mourning. Rachel, uh, weeping for her children, would not be comforted because they are not. So here you've got, here you've got. You now, know, the context of Jeremiah, which they don't tell you, isn't they, is the Jews being destroyed, uh, the temple being destroyed and being expelled from the land. And if you go to Deuteronomy 28, Deuteronomy 28, you'll see one of the punishments of the Jews was their children being taken away. Now, when you're doing a preacher of rapture, dispensationalism, you're supposed to compare scripture to scripture and not make up things as you're going along and then talk about well we're just you know we're just spitballing and we're just throwing things out and this is hypothesis and uh 28 uh, 32 thy sons and thy, and thy daughters shall be given unto another people and thine eyes shall look and fail for longing for them all the day long and there shall be no might in thine hand Deuteronomy 28 32 that's what Jeremiah 31 is looking at uh, where uh, Israel is weeping, her children were taken away. Her children were taken away, and they're going to be returned after 70 years. That's the primary view of that. So Matthew, he's going to say Matthew 2, 16 is the primary. It's not the primary. That's, just, that's, that's an illustration of Israel weeping. In this case, the children were killed. In the other case, in Jeremiah, the children were taken away. Let's see, Jeremiah 13, 15. Okay. Context of 144,000, which I'll get to in a second. Here you've got the slaying of all the children two years and under. Now, looking at Jer All the children in that area, not in all Israel. Jeremiah, um, Jeremiah chapter 31, which is being quoted in Matthew. They don't take any comments here either, which figures. Chapter 2, thus saith the Lord, a voice was heard in Ramah, lamentation, bitter weeping. Rachel weeping for her children, refused to be comforted for her children because they were not. Hmm. Well, that's what's quoted in Matthew chapter 2. Yes, yeah, that's an illustration. It's taken from there. 
in the the original uh, pro prophecy often, ha often has two applications. Here's the original application is their children were taken away as per Deuteronomy 28, 32. And they were looking, longing for them. They're weeping because the children were taken from them, taken captivity. So let's look at the rest of the prophecy. This is a prophecy of what's going to take place in Matthew 2. No, it's not. Those other verses aren't talk, spoken about. That was just a, uh, an illustration of a particular event and is given two it was given two aspects as prophecy two applications just like Hosea 11 1 was given the original prophecy was Israel being taken out of land of Egypt the second secondary uh, application was the Lord Jesus Christ coming out of Egypt so so the the original prophecy isn't dealing with Matthew 2 but it isn't all fulfilled because it continues no it was all fulfilled okay see it wasn't all fulfilled if it wasn't all fulfilled, you'd have it, those verses repeated in Matthew. Thus saith the Lord, refrain thy voice from weeping. He's saying, don't weep. Don't weep for these children. Why? Well, there's a greater purpose. And thine eyes from tears for thy work shall be rewarded, saith the Lord, and they shall come again from the land of the enemy. And there is hope in thine end, saith the Lord, that thy children shall come again to their own border. Well, where are those 144 things? That's nothing to do with Matthew 2. That had to do with the return of, uh, of, uh, of Israel into the lands. They were on border. The na those captive nations released them. That's Ezra and Nehemiah. That isn't Matthew 2, people. Nothing will destroy dispensationalism, people, quicker than guys like Stauffer and Breaker and, and Gene Kim and all these other guys who throw in nonsense and make up stuff. We're as bad as the post trip guys, then. Po you know, the non dispensational. So just allegorize everything. Thousand come from. Maybe. Maybe. You could tell you maybe and just throw it out the window. Maybe. This guy over here looking at us. Saying, what am I talking about? It's Rachel's children that were killed. You say, well, well there weren't enough. Ch that prophecy there in Matthew 31 is talking about the captivity as per the. Part of the, the, the judgment that hit him when uh, doing uh, Deuteronomy at 28. Longing for their children. As repeated as a double prophet, double application, crying, weeping for her children, that those children were killed. It wasn't only near 144,000, which would have had double that because it had been uh, children. Same in the same males. It said children. Children in, in, in Bethlehem at that time, and that's true. What about Moses' day? What about all the children? What about Moses' day? What? <laughs> what? Same about Matthew 2. What about Moses' day? Children that were thrown in the river, all the men. What about them? Oh, they're going to come back to it. Men that were thrown in the river. What about the children in, in the Holocaust? What? See? You're just going to bring back children all over the place. Maybe what we're going to see is just like the two witnesses, Moses and Elijah, are people that have lived before coming back again. Maybe, 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 maybe. That's not Bible teaching people. This is all theoretical nonsense that you can't, you can't link to anything. You can't link it and say, he's trying to link it to 31, John 31. He can't link it. That's not, those verses have nothing to do with Matthew, Matthew 2. Uh, two. Those verses have to do with the return of children, their children coming back after 70 years. Or 44 because they wouldn't be children anymore. <laughs> thousand have lived before, and think about who they are. They're the first Judeo Christians, so to speak. I mean, they're relate they're related to Christ. They're the first the first Judeo Christians. It's supposed to be a dispensationalist. The only way you be a Christian is in Jesus Christ, you in the Jesus Christ body. When you start breaking off and you get into this weird stuff, people, your theology just crumbles. A Judeo Christian. Fruits. That's what the Bible says in Revelation. They all hung up on that first fruits. It's a tribulation of first fruits. But it has certainly nothing to, be, nothing to do with children being brought back from the dead. Well, maybe they're the first fruits because of the first fruits in Matthew chapter 2. So, again, that's just a little bit, you know, yeah. sort of tweaking yeah. some thought. I want to just, you know, look into it even more. Yeah, and I, I know you can't look into it more because there's nothing there to look into. It's like date setting. With uh, with uh, Robert Baker, there's not one fact he can hold on to and say this. We can build on this. Knowledge is hierarchical, people. You got to build knowledge upon knowledge. 
Those verses there in Matthew 31 have nothing to do with Matthew 2 except the one that was actually quoted. It was a secondary application to children weeping, Israel suffering. But the primary application was the captivity. And that was part of the punishment they suffered in, in uh, dealing with in Deuteronomy 28, 32. This is how dispensationalism grew, people. It grew by comparing scripture with scripture. Not making up stuff on the top of your head and sitting and saying, Oh, oh, isn't this interesting? Oh, what about this? Oh, what about that? That's what the, that's what the non-dispensationalists did to allegorize clear passages in the Old Testament that looked at the millennium coming and said, well, that, that, that's already been done, or that really meant this, this, that meant that, and that really didn't mean, uh, you know, the, the real temple was going to be built. Or the, they allegorized and spiritualized in a, the top of the imagination, Augustine origin. That's who started the stuff. And they just had all kinds of imaginative stuff, people. They could make up stuff you, you couldn't believe how imaginative they were. That's what we got these guys now. Now you got guys doing the same thing because they want to show how imaginative they are. Whoa, whoa, look at this. Look at that. Oh, man. Oh, you see that? You see this? You see that? That is not dispensationalism. That is the end of dispensationalism. Because dispensationalism is based on a sound hermeneutic of command. Scripture is scripture. We take things literal. Unless, they ha unless we cannot take a literal, have to be figured. But we don't come up there and say, well, maybe, you know, maybe, you know those two very, you know, that's, that's, those, those aren't, aren't fulfilled. They were fulfilled. He's telling you, Jeremiah 31, 17, 16, 17, 16, 17, one fulfilled. He's out of his mind. They were fulfilled. That's the return of Israel back in the land. I'm going to stop with this up. This is a very dangerous thing. These guys out there talking this nonsense. This is why you got guys like Brian Dengler running around. Andrew Sluder denying the Trinity. Brian Dengler denying, denying the Trinity. Trinity. Guys like uh, Robert Baker talking stuff off the top of his head. Doesn't know what he's talking about. Setting dates. I'm not going to date. Jeff, I like to talk about this stuff. <laughs> this is insanity. And I stuff, read stuff. I follow through the stuff. He's often talking. You know, he breaks everything real down. You know, real but that is not dispensational theology. Dispensational theology is comparing scripture with scripture and says, this means this, and this lines up with this, and therefore this must result in that. The allegorizers, Origen and Augustine, and all the guys who followed them, who reject dispensational theology, a premillennial return, literal, interp literal interpretation of the Old Testament will tell you, oh, that doesn't mean that. You know, that's just really, and they have all kinds of imaginative ways that. Oh, you're clever. But it's nonsense then. The Bible becomes just a, a mystical book. It just means nothing. Because they can just make up anything you want to go as you go along. And it's not funny. You know, all, all, all his disclaimers up there, you know, with, uh, you know, Robert Baker. Nah, this, 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 you know, before and after. Big disclaimers. You know. And then he just tells you. And yet, it's the video. He's talking, he's talking like he's proving something. He hasn't proven one thing. And this guy didn't stop at the, at the uh, uh, thing. He just goes, well, maybe the children in Egypt, they're going to come back. And maybe, uh, you know, and maybe you can't prove any of that. But the one thing he's saying about those verses not being completed is, is false. That you can prove. Those verses we found specifically to Israel come back in the land. Who 140? We don't know. If God wanted us to know who the 144,000 were, he'd tell us. He would have put it somewhere in Scripture. He didn't. So stop looking for it. If God wanted us the date of the rapture, he would have told us that we're in scripture. People have been looking for that. No, it's not in there. He doesn't, he wants us to look for it, to wait for it, be imminent, you know, be prepared for it, the idea that to expect it every day. Expectation. But these guys always got to find something. Oh, look at that, look at that, look at that. It's nothing, nothing's in the Bible to learn without going to things that you can't, you can't know anything about. Why do you want to do I hung up on that? Do I hung up on that? It's like, you know, God, God, God got it taken care of. Don't worry about it. We'll take care of that. So the idea is, look, we don't know. And these guys certainly don't know. But what they are doing by putting their guesswork out is undermining the foundation of dispensational theology, the hermeneutic, which is a literal uh, uh, historical hermeneutic. 
and you look at scriptures and you go right what they say. And by taking uh, Jeremiah 31, 17, 31, 16, 17, saying that hasn't been fulfilled yet. Oh, that was fulfilled when the, the, the Jews returned. Just like, you know, Hosea 11, 1, the primary thing is the Jews coming out, Israel coming out of uh, Egypt. It was not uh, the, the word coming out of Egypt. That was a secondary application. So I'm going to stop, put this up and just show, look, these guys, boy, just come off the stuff. And then the other guy there saying, well, yeah, Elijah and Moses, you know, Moses died. And we know, and you know, Elijah was taken up. So we know the two witnesses, and they look, you know, and they have a lot of examples about, you know, they got the same plagues and this type of thing. So, but even that, I mean, people say, well, it might not be Moses, it might just play you know, types or something like that. But the reality is we have a lot more information on that than we do this. No information on 144,000, except the, they show up in Revelation 7, 11, Revelation 14. That's it. So stop with this up. Amen. Thank you.